In this problem, we're given a fairly straightforward task. Given these two vectors, d1 and d2, we have to perform this long operation of them, consisting of a vector sum, a cross product, followed by a dot product between those two results. Now, as annoying as the methods for vector addition and multiplication may be, solving this manually is really not that hard and is important to understand. In fact, if you're shaky on cross products and dot products and think you need some practice solving them, then I actually recommend that you try and solve this yourself by writing out all the components and such the way you would for any other vector operation. I won't do that in this video, however, because in this particular case, there's actually a pretty useful trick we can use to solve this very easily, though you might not notice it right away if you aren't pretty experienced with how the dot product works. Now, one way to think of the dot product is that it's a multiplication of the components in two vectors that are parallel to each other. As a result, dotting two completely parallel vectors will give you the largest output, while dotting two orthogonal or perpendicular vectors will give you an answer of zero. The cross product works in pretty much the opposite way, but what's important to understand is that the output of a cross product of two vectors is always equal to a third vector that is orthogonal to both of the vectors you started with. Now, where am I going with this? Well, think about what we have here. On the right, these two vectors being crossed will give us a vector that is completely orthogonal to both vectors d1 and d2. And as such, it will be perpendicular to the plane containing d1 and d2. On the left side, however, we have a simple vector sum of d1 and d2. And as we can demonstrate pretty easily by drawing the vectors out, as such, let's just say that I'm just, draw I'm just drawing like two arbitrary vectors here. So let's say that this is one of our vectors that we're dealing with, and this is another one of our vectors. So let's say I've just drawn out the two vectors we started with, d1 and d2, and I've drawn them in such a way that they're in the same plane as the paper, or as the, the screen you're looking at, since just two vectors alone always share at least one plane, and we're using the screen itself to represent that plane here. But anyways, again, as we can demonstrate pretty easily here, a sum of only two vectors will remain in the same plane that contained them both originally. So again, let's just say for the sake of argument that this is the resulting plane coming from adding these two vectors. This might not be a perfectly accurate representation of the specific two vectors we were given, but it should help get the point across nonetheless. As a result, this vector sum and this cross product will both be orthogonal to one another. Since we're dotting these two pieces together, then as per the rules of the dot product, this means that our final answer will simply be zero. The dot product effectively cancels them both out, and we end up with a magnitude of zero in our output.